Hey, what is going on guys? It's Thor Shea and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to save the Lord of the Rings Rise to War. So in today's video, we're going to be going over everything introduced in the new 2.0 update, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, as well as how to change and fix things so that both veteran players and new players can have an enjoyable experience playing Rise to War. I will also include chapters to every topic that we speak about in the video so you guys can skip ahead to anything that interests you. Anyway, if you guys do enjoy the video, please do drop a like, comment and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn those post notifications. Anyway, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so for part one of the video, we're going to be talking about Commander Respect as well as the Respect Refund System. So Commander Respect is probably one of the biggest changes they've made in the 2.0 update and well, a lot of people are hating it, okay? Let's be fair. A lot of people are not liking it. I honestly don't understand why they changed it the way they did. So yeah, we're gonna talk about the, you know, the negatives of the new Commander Respect system, as well as the positives that came with the new Respect refunding, because that is pretty cool, I will admit. So if you look at Commander Respect, right? So now they've changed it. So Commanders are basically able to level up to different rarities. So A1 obviously is a tier one Commander. Everyone knows this. Usually she is blue, right? Normally she looks like this, like Faramir, she's a mighty commander, okay? Or in my case, I just call it rare, epic, and legendary. You know, they call it mighty something else. What is it? Mighty, epic, and legendary? Yeah, I just call mighty uh, rare. But anyway, we're getting, off, uh, we're getting sidetracked there. So Eowyn is a rare commander usually, right? She's not an epic commander. However, with the new system, at like respect 10, or I don't know, I think you take her to respect 10, and then she ascends and she becomes a higher rarity. Like, I don't understand why that's needed. Uh, honestly, I, I don't get it. So that's the system, right? You get your blue commander to respect 10 and then she ascends, she becomes a epic commander. And you know, obviously the respect probably drops back down to five. Then you upgrade her again to 10 again, you ascend her again and you know, then she becomes a, leg a legendary commander. I don't understand why they needed to implement the system. To me, it makes no sense. Like, like it, it just doesn't make sense. I, I don't get why they did that. I mean, maybe someone can explain it to me in the comment section, but I think the commander respect system that they've changed it to just, it just doesn't make sense. And there was no point really adding it to the game. Now, if they wanted to implement something where commanders can upgrade their rarity, you know, go from rare to epic to legendary, this is what I think they should have done instead, right? So one, they can raise the maximum uh, respect cap. You know, it used to be capped at 25. So if they wanna make it infinite, fine, just make it 999, whatever, that doesn't matter, right? But what they should have done is, what, what they could have done would be where once a commander reaches a certain respect level, that's when they tier up to the next rarity. However, when they tier up to the next rarity, it doesn't drop the respect back down. Like it doesn't go one to 10, you know, then next rarity, one to 10, then next rarity. Instead, it just, it's just continuous. So what I mean by this is, so normally at respect level five, you unlock all the commander skills. At respect level 10, you unlock their unique weapon. So at respect 10, A1 unlocks a unique weapon. I had at like what, respect 18, I think. So what they should have done is maybe at respect level 15, she becomes an epic commander, okay? So she goes from being a rare commander to an epic commander. Then. At respect 15 now, you keep leveling her up. She stays at 15, by the way, when she becomes goes from rare to epic, she doesn't go back down you know, to respect level one again or respect level five, and then you have to level up again. No, instead at respect 15 or something, she becomes an epic commander. Then at respect 25, maybe she becomes a legendary commander. And then from there, you can just keep on leveling her up. And what they could have done with uniques, if they really wanted to, I guess they could have changed it. So uniques weren't unlocked at respect 10 and instead were unlocked at respect 25. If they really wanted to only allow you to unlock a unique once she became a legendary commander, that's what they could have done. It would have made a lot more sense. I mean, it wouldn't have made sense moving a unique up there, but you know, it would have been easier to understand for the player base, right? But I don't think they should have done that, okay? If they really wanted to do this whole changing your commander's rarity thing. They should have done it, the system I just explained, but they should have left uniques alone. Like that pissed off so many people and rightly so. I mean, I had Gimli's unique, absolutely amazing unique. I had it fully strengthened and halfway refined. I had Eowyn's unique, pretty great as well. I just didn't have the uh, gear to actually upgrade that, but that's besides the point. 
what I think they should have done to fix the respect system, but still have it with their new upgrading ability that they've introduced in 2.0 is this. Very simple. At respect 5, obviously you unlock your all your skills on your commander, that's fine. Then for a blue commander at respect level 15, they upgrade to epic, okay, or purple. Then at respect level 25, they upgrade to legendary. I still think unique should have been unlocked at respect 10, you know, since that was the original requirement. I don't think they should have changed that. Now for your epic commanders at respect 5, obviously all your skills are unlocked. And then at respect level 15, or maybe they could just make it at 25, then they upgrade to legendary. And as for your legendary, there's no upgrading because they are already at the max tier. So that is what I think they should have done instead if they were adamant about implementing a system where you can upgrade your commander's rarities, okay? So I'm talking about, I'm just trying to basically give an alternate solution or an alternate implementation of the systems that they've introduced to the game because currently as it is, everybody is hating it. You know, nobody understands why the commanders went from respect level 18 like mine all the way down to eight, even though I do get, you know, that she upgraded her rarity, but I, I don't see the benefit of upgrading her rarity, honestly. But yeah, the system I just, I just uh, you know, spoke about sounds like a much better way to implement what they already implemented in a way that people would actually understand what is happening rather than just doing it the way they did and leaving everyone confused. So that's enough about Commander Respect. Let me know if you guys do, uh, you know, do agree with what I'm saying, like, do you, like I don't like the current respect system. You know, it doesn't really make sense to a lot of people, but if they wanted to really implement something like that, the way I mentioned, I think is a lot better. You know, it's a lot easier for people to understand and it's just a better way for them to have implemented that system. Uniques, again, I think they should have left that at respect level 10. Once you get to level 10, you can unlock their unique. If they really wanted to, I mean, to make uniques harder to obtain, I guess they could push it to level 15 or something, but even then they would still face backlash from the community for you know increasing the requirements for uniques, which people obviously have spent money to get. But yeah, I, I, I think they should have left that at 10. Anyway, without rambling on too much because we are gonna start to ramble otherwise, let's go on to the next part. Well, it's still part one of the video, but the next part of part one, and that is the commander refund. So I think this is a very cool, feature, okay? If this was implemented in 1.0, so in version 1.0 of the game, this would have been extremely well received. People would be saying in the Discord, Netties, you guys are amazing. Devs, you guys are awesome, okay? Because let's say this was in 1.0, right? So the game was exactly as we all remember it last before it updated to 2.0. So it was that 1.0, and now you had respect conversion. So I could go, I could select a commander, that I don't use much maybe. For example, back then, I mean, I have respect for Boromir, respect five Faramir, respect five Dwalin. I don't use any of them. I don't, I don't ever use them. So if I was given the opportunity back then to, you know, convert their respect into items, which I could then pick and say, oh, I want Eowyn's item, I would have been absolutely ecstatic. I don't think anybody watching this video will disagree with me when I say, that if they implemented respect conversion in the 1.0 version of the game, everyone would have been absolutely happy with it. Even if it was limited, you know, to only being able to drop the commander's respect to level three and not going any further than that. Or if they had a, you know, this little, uh, what is this? This little respect conversion voucher thing that, you know, limits the amount of times you can convert respect. Even if they made that cost 400 gems or a thousand gems, you know, people that have gotten commanders with extra respect in them that they don't want, whether they just, you know, maybe pulled multiple invites or something. If they had those commanders and they wanted to convert it, you know, and obviously NetEase needs to make money from us and, you know, they already make a lot, but hey, they do need to make money. So even if they put a charge, you know, cost 500 gems, cost 400 gems, whatever, people would have been fine with that because it's an added feature, you know? It was never a thing you were meant to, you know, pick how you up your commander's respect, but now you do have that option to drop it back down and reinvest your respect, even though it's gonna cost a little bit of gems or something. Anyway, this is gonna be the end of part one, and I will be moving on to part two next. Okay, guys, so this is part two of the video, and in this part, we're gonna be talking about the gear changes. So I think the gear changes were honestly not needed, you know, it's another thing like the commander uh, respect system that was changed to increase rarities. Gear changes were not needed. Honestly, they weren't. However, I also understand 
that they wanted to add set effects so that it would be easier for, you know, lower spenders, I guess, to get sets that they wanted. You know, now, even if you don't have the greatest gear, you can still get four pieces that have the same effect, even if it's green or blue or purple, it doesn't have to be legendary and you can still get that pretty nice bonus of plus 20% damage or 20 attack, etc. While I say I understand that, it's also something that people are very unhappy with because a lot of people spent a lot of money, you know, to get that one specific gear piece with the one effect they needed. For example, maybe they spent a hundred dollars or a thousand or ten thousand dollars opening chest just to get a, you know, just to get maybe a carved dragon tooth with something they okay, I don't even think could you get that from a chest? I'm pretty sure you could, but you know what I mean, right? They they pulled a lot of chests to get a, a item with the the effect they wanted. Okay, they spent lots of money opening chests just to get maybe that Aegis Helm or, you know, something that gave them stun immunity or stun and madness immunity or that one gear piece that gave them pursuit. They really wanted that, okay? People spent a lot of money on that. And by changing effects the way they did, it made that investment useless. Like I opened a hundred chests, for example, right? To get maybe a focus protection quilted armor, okay? So I've spent money buying gems to convert into mathems to open those 100 chests to get that quilted armor with focus protection. Now, well, that's gone. This just has Warcry. So I get why a lot of people are angry about this. And I'm gonna try to suggest a alternate solution for this. So it's not gonna be the greatest, I guess, because there's no good way, honestly, to change the armor system and the gear system that's gonna suit everyone. So we're gonna try to do our best. So what I think they could maybe have done is they could have left the original effects on gear pieces, right? So any classic gear kept their original effect. However, if they went and updated the effect, it also added on the new effects. I know that's gonna make the old gear pieces really OP. I get that because now I'll have a quilted armor maybe with focus protection and war cry, which honestly is very broken. I get the focus protection and I get the 20% damage, wow. So I get that that is probably not a great balancing thing, but that is one way they could have changed stuff. Everybody then would be more than fine with moving on to the new system because they get to keep all their old items. They get to get the new effects without having to scrap their old effects, you know? And that's something that, I, I mean, honestly, I would have been fine with updating my armor if I got Warcry and Focus Protection. It's gonna make it bad for new players coming because they're not gonna have an opportunity to get the OG gear. So what would probably be a better idea would be leave old gear as is. However, make it so that you can still upgrade them using new gear. That way old gear doesn't suddenly become useless because you had a golden armor but your focus protection was only at 10% and it wasn't strengthened, right? Now, if you can still use new gear to upgrade your classic gear, that focus protection quilted armor is not useless because I can still upgrade it to max strengthening and I can still refine it using other quilted armors, you know? So that would probably be a better solution. So they add the new gear effects in, fine. You know, they have all these war cry and sharp blade and what is this evasive action. They have all these new set effects, you know? that all the new gear comes with. However, they leave old gear still able to be strengthened and refined using new gear. Because that way it wouldn't suddenly make all your old gear useless because now you can no longer strengthen or refine it if it wasn't fully strengthened or refined before. So that I think could be another solution to it. Anyway, let's move on to part three of the... Oh, actually, actually, I nearly forgot guys. The one good thing that came with the gear changes is being able to recycle gear. So as you can see, you can recycle respect items here, but you can also recycle equipment. And I think this is a really great change that if it was implemented into 1.0 is another change that people would have absolutely loved. Like if they implemented equipment recycling into the 1.0 base game, you know, before it was updated 2.0, people would have been more than, they would have been like, these devs are amazing because I can go, I can pick this, right? <laughs> I mean, I have 5,000 cutlasses maybe, I don't need them. I could now select all my cutlasses. Oh wait, those ones are locked, oops. But I could select all my cutlasses, right? And I could change, I mean, the exchange rate is not great. It's actually pretty bad, but you get the point, you know? 
if you had the extra gear that you didn't want, you could go and trade it in. You could go and recycle that gear for vouchers, and then you could come over here and you could change those vouchers in for new gear. Is the is the uh, the rate good? No, it's terrible. You're getting what? Uh, what is it actually? Is it two? Yeah, you're getting two equipment vouchers for a purple piece of gear. You're getting 20 for a legendary piece of gear. And it's going to then cost you 40 vouchers to get one new random purple equipment or 160 vouchers to get one new uh, legendary equipment, which is what? Eight legendary pieces basically for one new piece. Yeah, the exchange rates absolutely suck, but it's an option that is there for people. Okay. And that is the important thing because if you're a whale and you have 5,000 extra pieces of legendary gear lying around or purple gear lying around, I mean, you probably have a lot of purple because you just don't use it. You only use legendary. Then even if the exchange rate sucks, having that option is still going to be amazing for those players. You know, they're still going to be happy with it because it's not something you're forced to do. You know, you're not forced to scrap your gear. But if you do want to do it, the option is there. So I think if this system was added into 1.0, people would have been very happy with it. Anyway, let's move on to okay, part Okay, guys, three. so we're back with part three of the video. And in this part, we're going to be discussing the merit store. So I'm not sure how many of you have actually had a look at it since the 1.0 update. And well, I should say the 2.0 update, but you know what I mean. I mean, since 1.0 and things have changed in it. So in 1.0, all you had was these daily supplies, right? Now you also have weekly gifts. I think this is a great, this is a great addition. I mean, I don't think this was yeah back in 1.0. I've only noticed it since 2.0. So if I'm wrong, someone correct me. But this is a really great addition that came in with 2.0. I said they should expand the Merit Store, you know. When they first released the Merit Store, I was like, this is a good start, you know, being able to get extra resources and stuff is nice, but they should also maybe in the future add stuff like experience scrolls or adding weekly gifts or something like that. And by weekly gifts, I just mean gear. But yeah, so now being able to do that is pretty nice. Is it a ton of merit? Yes, it's 25,000 merit just to get one basic commander gift. Is that a great exchange? I mean, no, it's really not. 25,000 merit for one commander respect item that's blue. It doesn't sound great, but think about it like this. Before, your merit counted for nothing. Having merit was just, it was just to say, yo, I have more merit than you. I have a million merit, you don't. So even with a terrible exchange rate, this is fine because now you're actually able to get something out of your merit. So instead of me just sitting here with 50,000 merit or 100,000 merit or 900,000 merit, now I can at least spend 50,000 merit because this is limited to two and get two basic commander respect items. Or I could spend 75,000 merit and get one exquisite commander respect item. Or maybe I would assume if they add it in, it'll probably be like 150,000 respect for one legendary commander respect item. But hey, I think that would be an absolutely amazing addition. So I really like the fact that they've updated the Merit Store and I do hope they continue to update it and make it even better, okay? Because adding these weekly gifts, that's pretty great, though I do hope they continue to add it, maybe add legendary respect items, maybe even add equipment. That would be very nice as well. Another thing for part three is talking about the store, the market. So I don't know about this whole gold upgrade thingy McBob. But the one thing I do like about the market now is being able to get experience scrolls. So whether they should have added that as a market function, I don't know. But adding experience scrolls that you are able to get either as a market function or for, as a part of the merit store is a great idea. Okay, so I hope they continue to expand on this and they add experience scrolls as well, maybe into the merit store. Or if it's in the market, maybe not make it cost these silver bars because I don't have any. But yeah. Part three overall is only good vibes because great additions. Merit store, increasing the stuff you can buy there, that's always going to be a good idea. Even if it's not the greatest stuff, honestly, before you are, you couldn't get anything for your merit. So getting anything for our merit now is seen as a big win. Anyway, let's get on to part four of the video. Part four of the video is very simple. We're going to be talking about forts. And that's because why did they do this? This is the, This is such a bad update. I don't get why they did this. So I want to build a fort, right? Now look, I need my wood. Okay, that's fine. I need some stone. Great. I need some iron or some ore. Fine. But now I also need three ability points. Like why? I mean, I get ability points are free and you can get them very easily. You know, they just regenerate over time. But hey, maybe I've used up all my ability points quick marching or long marching or gathering supplies or extracting resources, whatever. I may not have ability points. And now... 
being unable to continue forting over somewhere or being unable to build a new fort because they don't have ability points, that's terrible. I, I think that's a very bad idea. And I don't know why they did that because imagine you're building a, a bunch of temporary forts because you're just forting over somewhere really far. So there's going to be a line of 20 forts behind you, literally, right? That's all going to have to wait on your ability points now. I, I don't agree with this, okay? So for part four, talking about the ability points for forts, bad idea. Don't know why they implemented it. They should get rid of that immediately. Anyway, let's get on to part five. Okay, guys. So for part five of the video, we're going to be talking about dumbing down commander skills and whether this is a good idea, I mean, honestly, I don't know. It has its benefits, it has its disadvantages. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the bad effects of doing this, okay? So as you see, there's no more subtrees. Subtrees are gone. There's only the four main skill trees, that's it. And the good part about this is it's obviously a lot simpler. You don't need to focus on, you know, making sure your commander has the exact right skill build. Otherwise, you're going to get absolutely destroyed. By timing down commander skills like this, it's going to be a lot easier for new players especially. So if you're brand new to the game, you're not going to have to necessarily go and search up one of my videos or maybe another YouTuber's video and say the best Gimli build, how to build Gimli, Gimli skill build. You're not going to have to do that because there's no... There's no subtrees. Before there was what, two, four, six, eight. There was eight extra subtrees you had to look at, you know, in order to build your commander. Now that's all gone. So I think the positive part of dumbing down the commander skills is exactly that. With it being dumbed down, it's a lot easier for you to build your commander skills. There's no requirement, you know, there's no, there's a very low chance of you ruining your commander skill build because honestly, you can close your eyes, go any, mini, mini, mo, and the chances are you're going to pick skills that are just fine, literally. Now, the opposite end of the stick, by damming down commander skills, you've made it literally impossible to build great counters to other commanders. Like, being able to build your commander, that was an entire diff that, was an, that was an entire new layer to the game, you know? Building your commanders in a certain way, like, commanders, you know, you didn't have to play them one way. For example, Aoma, you could build him for cav damage, aka army damage, or you could build him just for commander skill damage. That, that was pretty cool. For Gimli, you could build him for command. Okay, well, you're gonna build him for commander skill damage anyway, but you could make you could build him for skill damage mixed in with healing and protecting elves, and going for some army damage as well from like having some elvish archers protected by your dwarves, or you could build him for pure skill damage, which was probably by far the better build. But hey, you had that choice, okay? When the skill trees were not dumbed down and they were full on skill trees. You had choices, you were able to make the tree the way you wanted, you were able to pick your skills, you know, you were able to try out new stuff, there was more diversity. That's what I'm saying. There was a lot more diversity to commander skills and what you could do with them. With the dumb down now, it's a lot simpler, yes, it's a lot easier for new people to understand, but it's taken away that extra layer that was there to the game that a lot of people probably enjoyed a lot, you know, testing out different skills, putting points here, putting points there, seeing how it compared to each other in battle, you know, that, that was a lot of fun. So just to round this part off, round off part five, dumbing down commander skills was both good and bad. The good part is obviously it's a lot simpler to understand, especially for newer players. The bad part is it removed an entire different, it, it removed another layer of immersion from the game. It just wiped that layer away. And, you know, there's, there's no longer that excitement to building your commander in different ways, trying out different stuff. Now it's just four skills, pick two or three, and that's pretty much it. Anyway, let's go on to part six. So part six, we're going to be talking about formations. So this is a touchy topic. However, I think I have a solution that works pretty well to fix the biggest grievances that people have. So if you look at your formation, right? And okay, this, okay, I think we're safe here, guys. So for now, I think we're okay, but we're currently in a war with the variants. But anyway, let's, let's continue with this part of the video. So part six, as we said, is formations. And I feel the biggest issue that people have had with formations till now is the fact that you require four commanders. And the big issue with requiring four commanders is having to get gear for four commanders so that they can all perform great. That is, I think, the biggest issue that people are having with the formation system, okay? The fact that you have to use four commanders and that each commander needs to obviously be well geared. If only one is well geared and the other three aren't, you're probably going to be losing your battles. So with the biggest issue being needing to use four commanders and the biggest issue with that 
being needing to gear for commanders well so that they can actually all perform great as an army, I think there's a very simple solution to this. One that the player base would probably be very happy with, even if formations remained and you still needed four commanders for your formation, blah, blah, blah. And what is that? Well, it's very simple. So obviously, as you can see, there's a leader to the formation or a leader to the army. I like to call them armies rather than formations, but whatever. And that leader for this army is Theoden. So what I think they could have done to fix formations or to make formations a lot easier and less pay to win, because right now, honestly, to equip two full armies or two full formations, that's eight commanders, that's eight distinct sets of gear that is going to cost people a lot, right? Unless you're a massive mega whale and doing that is literally child's play for you. But for the vast majority, they may not have enough gear to equip one full formation, let alone two. So to fix this, it's very simple. Only the leader can carry gear, okay? And that gear stats is applied to everyone, okay? Or that gear stats is only applied to him, fine. And it just doesn't affect everyone else because honestly, if everybody obviously can only apply gear to the command to the main commander and the other three can't have gear, it doesn't make a difference because whether you're a whale, whether you're a free-to-play player, whether you have one or ten formations, only the commander is going to be having gear and the other commanders will only be contributing skills. I'm probably confusing you guys, so let me try say this again in a simpler way, okay? The biggest issue with formations is requiring four commanders. And the biggest issue with requiring four commanders is needing four sets of gear, one for each commander. Now to fix this, what I think they can do to solve it very easily is only making the commander of that formation, the main commander, the leader of that formation, able to use gear. So if, for example, my Theoden formation, if only Theoden can have gear, that's fine because then I focus on getting a nice full set of gear for Theoden, okay? And the other three commanders don't need gear. That's perfect. Why? Because without that, I can have a full formation and it's not going to cost me four sets of gear. It's only going to cost me one singular set of gear. So I think that is a very good solution. And that is something that NetEase can implement pretty easily, I would assume. You know, that is something that the player base, I'm sure all you guys watching will agree with me. Let me know. Do you agree with that? Do you think that would make formations a bit better for you guys? You know? Because instead of having to require four sets of gear for each one for each command in the formation, only the leader of the formation can have gear. So you only have to get one set of gear for the leader of the formation. And the other three commanders will be, just be contributing skills and uh, units, obviously. So, you know, my Theoden, for example, boom, he's got his gear on and everything, fine. My Eowyn, her, she only contributes the units in her army, so her cavaliers, and she contributes her skills. My Aoma, he only contributes the units in his army and his skills. My Imrahil, he only contributes the units in his army and his skills. But none of the other three commanders or the deputies, as I think they should be called, would require gear. So what do you guys think? You think that's a great for, uh, solution to the formation issue? You know, especially with the fact that needing four commanders in a formation means you're going to need four sets of gear per formation, which is a lot harder. You know, most people are probably only going to be able to field one full formation because that's already four sets of gear for that one formation. If you're like me and you have two formations, that's now eight sets of gear that you're going to need. You know, a lot of people are probably just running no no gear that with no strengthening, no refining, nothing. So I think that is a very good solution to the problem. Let me know in the comment section. Do you guys agree? Do you think that only the leader being able to use gear and all the deputies not being able to use gear is a good solution? I think it's a pretty great solution because that means you're back to only requiring one set of gear per army. And they still it still allows you to have the whole formation thing, which is pretty cool, honestly, being able to use four commanders and mix and match their skills. It's pretty decent, okay? And I think that this solves the biggest issue with the formations. So let me know what you guys think. And if you have any suggestions to further improve on that, let me know. Anyway, let's okay, move guys, on to So we're back with part seven of the video. And in this part, we're going to be talking about the new training system for troops. And this, I think, is pretty well done. Honestly, I like it. I don't have any issues with it, and I hope you guys also like it. Let me know if you guys think this is a good addition. I think if this was implemented in 1.0 of the game, you know, the 1.0 version of the game, I don't think anyone would honestly have any issues with it. I think everyone would honestly be fine with it. I think people would have no issues. So the new training system is very simple. Instead of being able to recruit each unit individually, so normally we go over here, right? Normally, you'd have to go and select each unit. Okay, I'm just going to click that so you can, I at least have sliders. 
and I would have to train, you know, so let's say I wanted to train some guardians, boom, I would train my guardians, right? Let me not accidentally click the tick while I'll be losing all my guardians. But let's say you want to train some guardians, so boom, you train guardians. And then let's say you only use guardians, you'd have to wait for that army to train before you could train more guardians, okay? Like even if you had four training queues, fine, but you had to train four different units. You couldn't train the same unit at the same time. So I think this new batch training system is a great addition because I can train the multiple sets of the same units. So for example, let's say you aren't using like a wide variety of troops. You're only using maybe one unit type or only two unit types, right? In the normal, uh, you know, in the normal training, you, w you wouldn't be able to maximize all your training queues. You have four training queues. You only use two training queues. So only two training queues are running. The other two are sitting there empty and you can't do anything with them. Now with the new batch training system, you could actually do something. So let's say I only use guardians and guards at the tower. And now I have four training queues. Now I can actually go and make use of that. For example, boom, we have one training queue with the guards at the tower. And boom, we have another training queue with guards at the tower. I think that's a brilliant addition, you know, because now for those people that do use less troop types, they can train multiple batches of the same troop, which is great. I, I see no issue with that. I think it's a good addition, especially if this was added into the 1.0 version of the game, you know, people would definitely like this feature. But yeah, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope I have covered everything, especially the biggest issues that people have had with the with the 2.0 update, as well as some of the good features that have come from this update that would have been really well received if it was received in the 1.0 version of the game. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, please do drop a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to turn on those post notifications. Anyway, I'll see you guys.